Today, I'm gonna to show you a tool that can help you drop into focus whenever you want. It's a cult favorite among my clients. I've been teaching it since the very inception of the life hack method. In fact, we also included it in our forthcoming book, Winning the Week, How to Plan a Successful Week Every Week. And you can learn more about that at winningtheweek.com. Now, we often think about interruptions as external, something that someone else is doing to us. And what might surprise you is that we interrupt ourselves just as much as we're interrupted by others. Now, that means that finding a flow state is tricky business, even when a lot is riding on the line. You know, we like to tell ourselves that the fault lies with external distractions, right? But the hard truth is, is that even when you take all those distractions away, we still have trouble focusing on the task at hand. But if you can hone your focus, you're going to find that the sky is the limit in terms of your success. And I'm not talking about being able to send more emails or attend more meetings. I'm talking about the big things, writing books, building businesses, getting a PhD. As your ability to focus increases, you feel more confident taking on bigger and bigger projects and challenges. My client Richard sent me this message after using the very same tactic I'm about to teach you. Check this out. Demir, it's 11.40 a.m. I'm so pumped about all the stuff I've gotten done this morning and yesterday afternoon. I'm totally energized. I've already logged more than two hours of deep work this morning. Even a week ago, I would have been happy to log just one hour of deep work in the whole day. I'm super excited about this progress. What I love the most about this tool is it makes focusing feel effortless and even fun which means instead of work being a chore, it's actually something you lean into. And that's because it leverages our brain's natural built-in focus mechanism, which is our love of playing games. The way that almost all mammals learn and develop is by playing games. It's just the way that we learn as a child. When a child's playing a game, they're preternaturally focused and engaged, but they're also delighted, sometimes to the point where they're giggling with glee. Evolution gave us a powerful, positive feedback loop for developing ourselves by doing challenging things. But here's the thing, the older we get, we play games less and less to the point where all traces of fun just get completely stripped from our life. And we bring this solemn cultural attitude to work and, and games just don't fit into that mold. Think about it. If anyone at work seems to be having too much fun, people are just naturally gonna assume that you're not taking it seriously enough or you're not working hard enough. But the opposite is true. We should start bringing play to work so we can start looking forward to our work. And in fact, when we're playing at work, we get so engrossed in our work that time just slips away. This is called gamification, where we bring the mechanics of play into our work. And I'm gonna show you a short game that I created that kills six birds with one stone. It helps you get highly focused. It enables you to work much faster. It shows you how to reclaim those orphan time blocks. You make fewer mistakes. Deep work feels almost effortless and you start enjoying work a whole heck of a lot more. I call it the sticky focus game and all you need is a pack of sticky notes, a pen and a kitchen timer. Here's how to play it. Step one, open your calendar and look at your schedule. Add up all your open blocks of time for today. And that means everything, everything that isn't already claimed by a meeting or a commitment. 30 minutes here, maybe an hour there. You might see an orphan time block in between meetings. Go ahead and count those two. The total represents the time in your day where you can actually work on something without distraction. So add it all up to see how much time you really have to move the ball forward today. Step two, lay out one sticky note per hour of availability. So let's say you have three hours of available time today because the rest is you know, committed to other things. You'll lay out three sticky notes and just slap them on the desk in front of you. Each of these sticky notes represents an hour long block of work where you can get focus, and you can get work done. If you've got a 30 minute open block of time instead of the full hour, no problem. Just rip the sticky note in half to represent that smaller time block. What you've done here is you've created a time currency. So just like a dollar bill represents one unit of money, each of these sticky notes now is a physical representation of a discretionary hour long block of your time. And it's easier to manage your time this way because now you can touch it and see it and arrange it and manipulate it in physical space. Step three is to write your most essential tasks on those sticky notes. Now go over to your task list and identify the big things that have to get done with these three focused hours. Now, ideally, they're going to be tasks that get you to your number one goal for the week. But listen, use your judgment. Go ahead and write those tasks down on the sticky notes. And if you've got more than three hours worth of tasks, just go ahead and put more sticky notes out. Just know that those probably won't all happen today. They're going to need to bleed over sometime to tomorrow or later in the week. But it never hurts, gang, to have a couple in reserve just in case you work through it faster than expected or maybe you get stuck on a task and need to move to another one. All right, step four, 
take those sticky notes and order them from most important to least important. Now, I know all of them could seem really important, but some are gonna be more important or more leveraged than others. So once you have those sticky notes placed in the order of importance, go ahead and move on to the next step. Step five, set a timer for 50, five zero minutes. Now, when you start the firing gun, the game begins. Pull out a kitchen timer and set it to 50 minutes. This is where the gamification really starts to happen. You're playing a game, and the objective of this game is to focus just on this task until the alarm goes off. I mean, really use your imagination to try to shut down the outside world and allow your brain to focus on just one task at hand. I joke with my clients that if a war broke out, you wouldn't know about it until you finished that work block. That's how focused you're trying to be. Gang, don't worry about whether you actually finish the task in precisely 50 minutes. That's beside the point. Just try to put as big a dent in it as you can in this 50 minutes. And if you can do that, I promise you're gonna be happy with the quality and the speed of your work, regardless of whether you complete it or not. If you're familiar with the concept of Pomodoros, this is similar, but with a much heavier emphasis on gamification. You're playing against yourself to see how deeply you can focus for a full 50 minutes. Now to succeed in this, you're gonna have to turn off all potential distractions and interruptions. Grab your phone, set it on do not disturb. Go to your email, turn off notifications, close Facebook, close TikTok. Consider moving to a quieter room or a deserted conference room at work. Maybe put a sign on your door telling people, please don't come in for the next 15 minutes, I'm working. Everything that could be a potential distraction has to get nipped in the bud for you to set yourself up for success in this game. Now, to me, it's not a game if you can't lose, right? So since the goal is to get focused without getting distracted in any way, to me, losing means allowing yourself to get distracted even once. So if you lose your focus, you lose that sticky focus session. And when you stay focused, you win. So some people go a little easier on scoring themselves, but I find that keeping the challenge level really high keeps me engaged and actually makes it fun. I'm trying to win this game. Once the alarm goes off, you're done. And if you attempted to focus for 50 minutes straight, you're gonna have noticed a massive jump in your productivity. Trust me, gang, the feeling is not subtle. It feels like getting more done in an hour than you usually do in four hours of work. And here's the best news. My clients who lose this game, meaning they weren't perfectly focused the entire time, they often tell me they were still so much more productive compared to when they weren't even trying. So this is a game where when you lose, you actually still win. Now again, the point is not to finish the task, but at some point, of course, you will. So when you do, crumple that sticky note up and put it in a bowl in front of you. That growing pile of crumpled stickies is gonna serve as a physical representation of your output, your work. Gang, you know the problem with knowledge work is you really can't see it or touch it once it's completed. So it really makes it hard to feel a sense of accomplishment. Now you're gonna have this big overflowing bowl of crumpled up stickies on your desk to show you what you did this week. And finally, step seven, give yourself a reward. In between those sticky sessions, you have a short 10 minute break. So no matter how well you feel like you did or how poorly, just give yourself that time as a reward. You know, I like to give myself a little guilt-free time to watch like a short YouTube video or pop into the kitchen for a snack. Whatever you do, don't skip the reward because you think you don't deserve it. Rewards aren't about deserving something. They're about creating a positive reinforcement loop. I mean, imagine trying to train a puppy without the treats. It's impossible because rewards are the key to reinforcing good behavior. So just like a cute little puppy, your brain needs rewards to reinforce new behaviors and new patterns. So if your aim is to train your brain to focus intensely, you gotta reward yourself every single time you do it right. Plus, frequently resting your brain is crucial to maximizing the overall amount of work you can do in a day. Just like bodybuilders have to rest between heavy sets, you've gotta rest your brain between bouts of intense work. And you'll be surprised how quickly you tire out if you work straight through for several hours with no breaks. Here's a tip to take it to another level. Supercharge your game by using different colored stickies. Blue stickies for shallow work and pink stickies for deep work. And the pink stickies represent that truly meaningful work that moves you ahead, your deep work. Maybe it's something you've been procrastinating on or something that's outside of your comfort zone. I mean, imagine if you completed one thing every day that was outside your comfort zone or that you'd been procrastinating. How much faster would you reach your goals? And of course, the blue stickies represent shallow work, the regular work that it's gotta be done. It's the stuff that you need to maintain status quo. Gang, for most people, capturing focus is like chasing a butterfly. It's tricky, it's elusive, but now you have a tool for consistently accessing a state of deep focus, and it's called the Sticky Focus Game. 
you can download my cheat sheet for playing the sticky focus game in the description below. It summarizes all the steps I just mentioned for easy reference when you sit down to play this game. So let's get started. I am challenging you right now, whip out some sticky notes and play this game right now. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're obsessed with human potential and living your best life like we are, consider subscribing to our channel and I'll see you in the next video.